Welcome, my dear viewers, thank you for being with my channel and watching my videos, I'm telling you a story from my life, watch this video to the end, you will understand what I'm telling you, so as not to miss my new videos. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel and leave your explanations in the comments then let's go. Why are you ignoring me? I've decided not to engage with strangers. I understand. I'll continue living with my in-laws. They completely ignore me. I expected it from my mother-in-law, but I never imagined my father-in-law would treat me this way. There was a reason why the once kind in-laws had changed. It was because of my sister-in-law, who disliked me. With her return, our peaceful life together was completely appended. Don't regret it, okay? You think I'm going to regret this? Think again, jerk. I packed my bags and left my in-law's house. Sure enough, just three days after I left, chaos broke out in their household. I met my husband at my workplace. He was in sales and frequently visited my office. I was his main contact. As we spent more time in meetings and discussions, I grew fond of him. He was a caring and kind man, tall and not necessarily handsome in the conventional sense, but he exuded a charismatic vibe. He was popular, but for some reason, he said he liked me, and we began dating. When we talked, he mentioned growing up in a typical family with parents and a sister. I lost my parents in an accident when I was young and grew up in an orphanage. It was a complex issue for me, but when we started dating, I quickly shared my background with him. He responded, That must have been tough, but don't worry, I'll always be there for you. Soon after, he proposed. From the beginning, my husband intended our relationship to head towards marriage and quickly introduced me to his parents. During the introduction, I told them about growing up in the orphanage. They listened attentively and reassured me that it wouldn't matter in our marriage. It made me very happy. Besides, they told me that being raised in an orphanage had nothing to do with being their daughter-in-law, which truly made me happy. Only my sister-in-law, being very attached to her brother, seemed taken aback, asking, You grew up in an orphanage? My husband had to reprimand her. In retrospect, she probably disliked me from our first meeting. I didn't give it much thought at that time, thinking we had just met. Before our marriage, my husband and I discussed moving in with his parents. We seriously considered it. But in the end, I decided not to quit my job. It turns out my husband was set to be transferred soon. I thought about quitting my job to move with him, that my career was going well, and I had just been given direct reports. We discussed it and decided he would move on his own after getting married. I wanted to savor that newly feeling for a bit. I even casually thought about visiting my husband during the long weekends for a little vacation feel. The idea of moving in with the in-laws so soon after marriage was a bit daunting, that my husband probably felt more at ease living with his parents. Plus, to put his ever-worried mother at ease, he probably wanted us to live together. Having lost my parents at a young age, I had always yearned for a family, so living with them wasn't an entirely unappealing idea. Plus, my in-laws had always treated me kindly, and I had grown fond of them. Balancing work and my duties as a daughter-in-law was challenging but having a family made me happy and fulfilled. One day, my father-in-law approached me with an unexpected request. This would mark the beginning of the unraveling of our seemingly happy cohabitation. It was a time when my overly anxious mother-in-law, who tended to act domineering towards my father-in-law, was out shopping. I was about to start cleaning on my day off when my father-in-law asked to speak with me. What's the matter? Well, I don't want my wife to know, but I'm taking a leave from work. A leave. He explained that he had been having problems with his boss and co-workers, and his health had deteriorated to the point where he had no choice but to take a leave. My mother-in-law is a good person, but she's always anxious and a bit neurotic, living with them. I began to notice her neurotic tendencies and how my father-in-law tipped it around her to avoid upsetting her. He had always been on the slimmer side. But now that I think about it, 
he did seem to have lost some weight recently. It would be nice if my mother-in-law was the type to genuinely worry about my father-in-law's weight loss. However, when he had previously taken a sick day due to a cold, she remarked, a cold. All of your colleagues are at executive levels by now. It's because you're always taking days off claiming bad health or colds. That's why you don't get promoted. Rather than showing concern, she was the kind to give him a hard kick in the pants. He probably tried his best to push through, no matter how poor his health was. However, his condition worsened, and he secretly took multiple sick days to visit the hospital. He was both mentally and physically at his limit. With his frequent early departures, tardiness, and absences, there was talk of him possibly taking a temporary leave from work. But my father-in-law didn't want to upset my mother-in-law under any circumstances. If he were to suggest taking a leave of absence, it's obvious that she would explode in anger. Besides, my father-in-law's salary wasn't that great and he depended on his overtime pay. So taking a leave would mean he'd be making significantly less. If he told my husband, he'd probably end up telling my mother-in-law. So he approached me, asking if I could help with the living expenses. If I suggest taking a leave, she might even divorce me, he said. Hearing those words from him felt like a punch to the gut. I deeply appreciated my in-laws, who had warmly welcomed me without discriminating against my background of being raised in an institution. Determined to be supportive, I made up my mind to help him out during this tough time. Understood. I'll transfer money into your account every month. Please use it for living expenses. I'm truly sorry. I'll do my best to recover quickly and return to work. Thank you so much, he said. After that, my father-in-law pretended to go to work as usual. While I transferred money into his bank account, which he used for living expenses, my mother-in-law, being rather carefree, didn't meticulously check her bank statements or maintain a household ledger, so she never noticed my transfers. Pretending to go to work, he would visit a mental clinic or take walks in the serene mountains. Gradually, his complexion seemed to improve. I thought he might be returning to work soon, but then an unexpected event occurred. After a marital spat, my sister-in-law returned to her parental home. Ah, there's nothing like being home. I thought I'd go crazy if I had to stay with that idiot husband of mine. I'll be staying here for a while. Please prepare meals for me too. I was well aware from our first meeting that my sister-in-law didn't like me. During our family's first meeting, my husband was really upset because she was visibly displeased. During the wedding, she maintained a sour expression throughout and even told me point blank, my brother looks so good, but you? It would have been better if he married someone prettier. She openly looked down on me, raised in an institution, saying it was embarrassing that I didn't have parents to present at the wedding. However, she got married earlier than us and had already moved out so I thought our interactions would be limited. That's why I thought living with them would be okay. If she had been living at home, I wouldn't have even considered moving in, knowing the daily jibes I would receive. Still, I thought this visit was just temporary due to her marital problems and expected her to leave within a few days. Despite her stern behavior towards my father-in-law, my mother-in-law was never harsh towards me. Even if my sister-in-law had made snide comments, I believed my mother-in-law would have defended me. But I was wrong. One day when I returned from work, something seemed off about my mother-in-law's behavior. Is something wrong? She seemed distant, not engaging in her usual conversation. When I asked, she responded, Did you know you've been bad-mouthing me behind my back? What? I've never said anything bad about you. You've always been kind to me, and I'm truly grateful. Why would I beg mouth you? You've been playing the good daughter-in-law card all this time, but you've been bad-mouthing me on the side. Fine, whatever. Saying this, she left the room. In the hallway, my sister-in-law was smirking. Looks like you've fallen out of favor. Did your true colors show? Being raised in an institution, your background really does show, huh? 
It's better not to badmouth people, you know? I haven't said anything bad about her. Oh, the neighbors seem to have heard it. After I returned home after such a long time, they told me that you've been constantly criticizing her. What? Who are these neighbors? Look, it's been a while since I got married and moved out, so I've kind of forgotten the names of the neighbors. I've never said any of those things. Stop making things up. Oh my, how rude, Mom. She's calling me a liar and bullying me. Saying this, she entered my mother-in-law's room. After that, my sister-in-law's malicious behavior escalated. She claimed I told her to sleep in the corridor and take the last bath because she's just a lodger. She complained to my mother-in-law about every little thing. Every time, I had to explain that I hadn't said or done any such thing. However, my mother-in-law seemed to be completely taken in by my sister-in-law's words and seemed to be under her influence. My sister-in-law continued her day, making me wonder if she intended to stay indefinitely. With these worries, I headed home with a heavy heart. I'm home. Previously, my mother-in-law would cheerfully greet me with welcome back. Now, there was silence. I'll get dinner ready, I said stepping into the living room. I was shocked. Normally, my sister-in-law would nag me to prepare dinner quickly, but now my mother-in-law, father-in-law, and sister-in-law were all eating sushi together. Surprised? My sister-in-law said, Oh, it looks like someone who isn't family is home. You're not thinking of having sushi, are you? Without even glancing at me, my mother-in-law continued eating while watching TV. If you wanted sushi, you should have said so. I rushed home after shopping. No one asked for that. Hey, mom, dad, I went out with my friends during the day and got some delicious pudding. Let's eat together. As my sister-in-law said that without paying any mind to me, the three of them started eating the pudding. I was exhausted from work and didn't have the energy to get upset. So I went to my room without eating. The next day, my sister-in-law said she was going out with friends and asked me to drive her to the station. I obviously declined since it was a weekday and I had work. Even if we were headed in the same direction, it would be a completely different route and she wanted to leave close to noon. There's no way I could take her. Just take a day off, it's fine. Your cute little sis-in-law just wants a ride. She never had the chance to relax and hang out after she got married, right? Can't you be a bit kinder to her? Now, with all due respect, didn't you go out with friends last night after getting a late night call? Seems like you've been going out almost every day since you came home. I have work. Please take the bus or train. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law were murmuring in the background, but I was fed up. I left for work. However, that night, the defining event that made me decide to leave this house took place. I got held up at work and returned home after picking up some groceries, expecting to be berated. It had started raining by the time I left the office, and it was pouring so hard that even getting in and out of the car, I was drenched. I wondered what nasty trick would be played on me tonight. But when I got home, the three of them were eating takeout just like the day before, no greeting, acting as if they didn't even notice my return. But I've grown used to this treatment. I glanced toward the courtyard from the hallway and saw something placed in the center of the garden. Taking a closer look, it was my belongings. A designer bag I bought with my first paycheck. Shoes that were my first birthday gift from my husband. And even my computer that I used for work at home was soaked. As I was in shock, my sister-in-law said with a smirk, I felt so grossed out having a stranger's things in the house. I threw them out, flaunting a designer bag like that. How arrogant of you. Neither of my in-laws said a word about her outrageous behavior. Why didn't you stop her? Have I done something to you? Do you really believe her lies that I've been bad nothing you, bullying her? Aren't you mad at her for what she did? My mother-in-law avoided my gaze, staying silent. Why won't you say anything? I can't talk to strangers. I can't be friendly with someone who's not family. My mother-in-law wouldn't even look at me. My sister-in-law grinned, waiting for my rebuttal. Wait, where's my father-in-law? 
I'm the one supporting him during his time off. I'm the one helping out with the finances in this house. Sure, I did it out of gratitude, but shouldn't he defend me now? Surely, he'd be on my side. Hoping for support, I looked at him, but he walked past me without a word and went into his room. That was the breaking point for me. I see, I've had enough. Oh, are you mad? I'm sorry. To be honest, I never liked you from the beginning, you know? Being raised in an institution and all. Just don't regret this, like I would lose her. I packed my things and prepared to leave immediately. Seeing me in this state, only my father-in-law seemed flustered since he was the one depending on me financially. Still, he didn't try to stop me or defend me. I was completely done with his apathy. My husband's work assignment was quite far away, but I wanted to leave this house as soon as possible. I quickly got in my car and drove to him. I never once confided in my husband about all this. I doubt my mother-in-law told him about my sister-in-law coming back home. If he had known, he would have contacted me, knowing I don't get along with her. But my husband never mentioned anything about my sister-in-law in his calls or messages. I never felt anything off about my husband's behavior, but perhaps he's being manipulated by her, fed lies about various things. Even now, as I head to him, he might treat me with the same cold attitude as them. My heart was exhausted, feeling so suspicious even towards my husband, whom I trust most. If he's of the same mind and attitude as them, maybe divorce is the only option. That's how deeply distressed I felt. When I arrived at his out-of-state apartment, he hadn't returned yet, perhaps busy since it was the end of the month. As I waited, my husband energetically entered the apartment, maybe having noticed the lights. What if you were coming? You should have told me. I would have come home earlier. What a surprise, no, just seeing your face. He immediately greeted me with a radiant smile. The relief of seeing him happy to see me combined with the humiliation from my in-law's house made a mixture of emotions flood out. And I broke down crying. What happened? Did I say something wrong? Seriously, what's going on? It seemed my husband had no idea about the treatment I received at his parents' house. I composed myself, knowing I had to clearly explain everything to him, and began to recount everything. How I had been financially assisting his father who took medical leave, without telling his wife that his sister had returned and was now staying at their parents' home. That she'd been feeding his mother lies about me, turning her cold towards me, how they referred to me as an outsider, how they ignored me, left my belongings out in the rain and ruined them. Through tears and pauses, I told him everything. Finally, I made it clear that I had no intention of ever returning to that house, and that if he couldn't agree with me on this, I'd want a divorce. My husband apologized for being too engrossed in his work and not checking in on me more often, regretting his family's behavior towards me. Of course, he told me I don't have to go back to his parents' house or even speak to them. Even if I ever forgave them, he was adamant about cutting ties with his parents and sister. He also promised not to provide any financial aid to his father anymore. That night, I felt truly relieved. The tension I had been holding melted away, and I had a peaceful sleep by his side. After that, I never returned to my in-law's house. While commuting from my husband's out-of-state place was not feasible, I had already approached my company about working remotely. Since my sister-in-law and mother-in-law started treating me harshly, my job doesn't necessarily require being in the office, and many of my colleagues and superiors also work remotely. While I had to visit the office a few times a month, several colleagues lived even further away, so switching to remote work wasn't a problem. I hadn't truly experienced married life since moving in with his family and dealing with my sister-in-law's bullying, but now we could finally live like newlyweds. Just as I was setting up my remote workstation, predictably, my sister-in-law contacted me. It turned out the day after I left their house was the day my father-in-law was supposed to get paid. My mother-in-law usually withdraws a certain amount and transfers it to their household account on payday but this time she couldn't. Until now, 
I have been supplementing my father-in-law's reduced salary due to his time off. Upon checking their balance, my mother-in-law confronted him, and he confessed that I have been helping them financially. Hey, why didn't you tell me you were covering the living expenses? He told me not to, saying he didn't want you to know, so I kept it a secret. Anyway, we're running out of money for living expenses, and there's no one to cook or do laundry. The room is a mess. As his wife, you need to come back and take care of these things and transfer money quickly. How heartless. I told you, didn't I? I don't regret this. I have no intention of going back to that house or continuing as your maid. Why should I help people who hate me, destroy my belongings, and treat me like this? Aren't you his wife? Without your help, we can't pay the electricity or gas bills. We can't even go shopping. That's why I said it. I'm an outsider, so it's none of my business, right? I hung up, ignoring my sister-in-law's ranting. She and my mother-in-law kept pestering me with calls and messages, but I ignored all of them. Even after my husband returned from work, the persistent calls from them continued. When my husband answered, he told them firmly, I'll never forgive you for how you treated her, and I'm never sending her back to you. I'm not coming back either. I don't consider you my family anymore. Stay away from my wife, or you'll regret it. Given that my sister-in-law adored her brother, and my mother-in-law heavily relied on him, they were probably in shock. A few days later, I received a call from my father-in-law. He said living with my mother-in-law and sister-in-law was becoming unbearable, and he begged me to continue the financial assistance. I'm still grateful for them accepting me, who grew up in an orphanage when they married. But they didn't support me in my time of need, despite all the financial help I provided. I don't owe them anything. Why should I help those who joined others in ignoring me? I'll never assist you again. And with that, I ended the call. Later on, my relentless mother-in-law and sister-in-law audaciously showed up at my workplace. Since I was already working remotely and had a bad feeling about them, I'd informed my company about the situation. The security was alerted immediately. Apparently, they caused a scene, demanding that the company force me to send money back home. Upon hearing this, my husband said, report them to the police. Colleagues at my company were supportive, saying, I can't believe you lived with those people. Focus on your remote work with your husband. As for my in-laws, my father-in-law's health deteriorated under the pressure from my mother-in-law and sister-in-law, and he'd eventually resigned. My sister-in-law tried to return to her husband's family, but he refused to take her back. The small town quickly caught wind of her drama at my workplace. Given the embarrassment, there was an uproar at her in-law's place. The original reason for the fight between my sister-in-law and her husband was her affair. This incident added to their issues, leading to an immediate decision to divorce. Without a home, my in-laws and sister-in-law moved to a cheap apartment, managing to get by on part-time jobs. As for my husband and me, we're finally living peaceful days, feeling mentally and physically fulfilled. Recently, we found out we're expecting a child and are overjoyed. We're looking forward to the day we meet our baby, cherishing our time together.